Oh, oh yeah, Mohammed, can you turn on the projector? <laughs> He's the one in charge. And let him enjoy his sweet tea, guys. Good. Yeah, it's okay. Just check out the mic is on the camera. Okay, we can't see the bar. Oh, okay. Yeah, the bars. Let me just quickly change, and then I go back. Am I supposed to put it front? <coughs> okay, so ulcerative colitis. Now in ulcer colitis, there's ulcers in Crohn's disease and inflammation. See, both of them are together known as inflammatory bowel disease. Both of these diseases are known as inflammatory bowel disease. Okay, <clears throat> and let's compare them. Now, the cause of inflammatory bowel disease, usually it's age related. So, now there's bimodal age in both cases. It's common in teenage, and slightly older people so the peak age is 51 and 15 in that sense so teenage 50s and, and teens so you can say by moral age so no no that's for both oh. I'm talking about both this for both okay. okay both diseases are known as inflammatory bowel disease both diseases are common in teenage it peaks in teenage and then it peaks in 50s okay and people who are at risk are Caucasians Yeah. So both of them, so all sorts of, uh, so that's like at age 15 and 51? And yeah, so the disease, look, it occurs in all ages. Now the peak of this disease is usually in teens and then in 50s. Yeah? Both okay. Diseases, right? Both, both. Okay. And both diseases are common in Caucasian. Okay, Caucasian, especially <coughs> Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia. Okay, very common in those areas. Okay. Now, in European Jews or Ashkenazi Jews, it's very common. Very common. Okay. All right. Usually, the question will say, like, you know, um, a European Jewish person of Jewish descent came with this, 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 and you're supposed to immediately know. Okay. So, that's one thing. All right. <coughs> Now, in ulcerative colitis, you know, ooh, I like my voice. Now, in ulcerative colitis, the symptoms, the chief complaint will be diarrhea. In Crohn's, it's diarrhea. Okay. In ulcerative colitis, the diarrhea is bloody. 
that makes sense because ulcers bleed right ulcers bleed okay and prone it is water diarrhea <clears throat> now in Crohn's in addition to this they might have mass left lower quadrant mass which is the terminal ileum or the ileocecal junction or sphincter will swell terminal ileum will swell it will look like a mass it will feel like a mass not look you will feel it there will be inflammation there will be swelling in that area if that happens that can lead to constipation as well if that terminal ileum swells and the lumen is obstructed it will lead to constipation so not always diarrhea you know so if somebody comes in complains of constipation in that case you will have <coughs> abdominal distension again that's obstruction so you know what obstruction the symptoms of obstructions are distension pain and constipation that's what obstruction means nothing is being passed beyond that point so obviously the ab abdomen will distend and there will be pain and distension so distension pain and constipation but the typical signs of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis that's all you will see a patient complaining of water diarrhea water diarrhea the most rarely sometimes they might have fever sometimes sometimes they might have fever they're inflammatory disease but fever is not so common so again your focus will be on diarrhea 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 now let's do this Crohn can lead to malabsorption malabsorption okay ulcerative colitis can lead to malabsorptions too okay. huh now we're gonna go over some typical things how do we differentiate between them based on symptoms number one ulcerative colitis is uh, bloody diarrhea and Crohn's disease water diarrhea now in Crohn's there are some complication uveitis uveitis is inflammation of the uvea of the eye which is the inside of the iris so the patient might be sensitive to light they'll have photo sensitivity or photophobia they don't like light. Yeah. Now with the diarrhea with the, with the colitis, mm -hmm. it be just uh, uh, male absorption, absorption of water. Mainly. Yeah. No, I'll come to but that. But the nutrition will be okay. Not necessarily. No. If it if it leads to the stage of malabsorption, in ulcerative colitis, it's not so much as much as in Crohn's. Right, because it's in just as much. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. What he's saying is very good. Is that in Crohn's disease because the intestine is involved you have malabsorption of amino acid vitamins sugars or nutrition in general in ulcerative colitis most likely you will have malabsorption of water and electrolyte that's correct that's correct okay all right <clears throat> so uveitis they can have dermatitis okay dermatitis herpetiform herpes like rash herpes like rash herpetiform dermatitis herpetiform okay huh? neurological symptoms most likely in Whipple's disease but in Crohn's you can have it as well okay so uveitis dermatitis <clears throat> they can have oral ulcers oral ulcers oral ulcer in this case known as aphthous ulcers aphthous Aphthous ulcers, okay. Oral ulcers are more common in Crohn's disease, but let's see how we can differentiate. Both will have anemia. How would the anemia be different in these two cases? Very good. Good job, good job. In Crohn's, it will be megaloblastic anemia. In ulcerative colitis, it will be microcytic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, because blood loss in, in ulcerative colitis. And B12, intrinsic factor malabsorption in Crohn's disease. Okay. Okay, so there's more. There's more. 
now you see Crohn seems to be more more in terms of symptoms severe okay now in Crohn's you can have <coughs> vitamin malabsorption so especially fat soluble vitamin vitamin A vitamin D vitamin E vitamin K because they're all absorbed where in terminal ileum and bile acids are also absorbed so lipids so you can have so, some sort of lipid malabsorption especially vitamin a d e k so bone fractures will increase risk of bone fractures night vision will be decreased increased tendencies of bleeding bleeding tendencies that's who in crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis not so much not so much but ulcerative colitis is worse than Crohn's in one thing. It puts you at risk of colorectal cancer. Okay. Ulcerative colitis puts you at risk of colorectal cancer. You're more likely to develop colorectal cancer than Crohn's disease. Yeah. Yeah. They could, but they're not common. Not common. No. Crohn is most likely water diarrhea. Ulcerative colitis most likely bloody diarrhea. Does that mean 100%? No, of course. In ulcerative colitis, you can have water diarrhea. In Crohn's, you can have bloody diarrhea. That's true. But I'm talking about overall. The main symptoms of ulcerative colitis is bleeding, diarrhea, bloody diarrhea, bloody diarrhea, at least for the purpose of the exam. Because you're supposed to know that ulcers are more likely to bleed than just plain inflammation. Okay? And if there is bleeding in Crohn's, the bleeding is old. It would be more like melana. But in ulcerative colitis, it's most likely fresh, especially if it's a rectosegmoid area. So bright blood, red blood versus dark blood. In Crohn's disease, you're at risk of kidney stones. Kidney stones. It's a big disease. Now, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are 100% guaranteed on the exam. 100%. On any exam. Why kidney stones? Yeah, why kidney stones? Anybody want to help? Uh, why kidney stones? Why is Crohn's disease at risk of kidney stones? What kind of kidney stones will increase in this case? What are the types of kidney stones you know about? Okay, so calcium stones, uric acid stones, cysteine stones, infectious stones, which is trovite, urate stones, not uric acid. Okay, anything else? Oxalate stones. Oh, there are oxalate stones. Yeah. yeah. Oxalate stones. Oxalate. 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 It's a type of amino acid. Oxalate stone. Oh, the acid, oxalate. Mm -hmm. Oxalate stones will increase in Crohn's disease because of its malabsorption. So, why is oxalate being other in the <coughs> It's more it's filtered in blood so blood level of oxalate will increase most likely it's filtered where in the kidney, in the kidney and it will precipitate and form stones so why is it increasing <coughs> because of uh, uh, metabolism less amino acids so oxalate will be used yeah. oxalate acid yeah. okay so oxalate stone so put here oxalate stone All right, next thing. So these are how you, that's how you differentiate between them based on symptoms, okay? Now, Crohn disease also at risk of cancer, but ulcerative colitis by far more. Ulcerative colitis also puts you at risk of, there is a liver disease known as primary biliary cholangitis. Primary biliary, let me write it down here on top so you can see it. I'll write it in in green. Is not favorite color. Is she here today? Is she here? Oh, there is she. 
she's usually late right biliary primary biliary cirrhosis so I forgot the primary part primary biliary cirrhosis cirrhosing cholangitis sorry primary biliary cirrhosing <coughs> cirrhosing cholangitis col angitis Sometimes another term will be used instead of cirrhosis, so know that one. And sometimes another term that is known as sclerosis, which is very similar. Primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay. Now the biliary means that it is bile ducts. So primary <coughs> sclerosing cholangitis. You can say primary biliary sclerosing cholangitis. But if you say call angitis, you don't have to use biliary, the term. You could use it. I'm just telling you all the options. Okay? So the appropriate name will be primary sclerosing call angitis. But you can also primary biliary sclerosing call angitis. Primary biliary uh, cirrhosing call, call, call angitis. Ah. Call angitis means inflam inflammation of those vessels that carry bile. Call, cholesterol, or bile angitis vessels these are not blood vessels these are bile ducts it's a disease of bile ducts okay which is inflammatory right when you use the term angitis cholangitis inflammatory and ulcerative colitis is what chronic inflammatory disease they're both chronic inflammatory so they have a relationship now in ulcerative colitis infection with hepatitis b virus increases the risk of hepatitis b infection increases okay the risk of hep uh, hepatitis B virus increase in this patient and Crohn's as well, but more in ulcerative colitis. <clears throat> okay, complication of ulcerative colitis, there's so many. Anal rectal fistula. Volvulus. Okay, intestinal adhesions. All these are more common in ulcerative colitis compared to Crohn's disease. Now let me tell you quickly, I'll talk about each one of these. Anorectal fistula. So let's say this is the sigmoid colon and then rectum and anal canal. Okay. Anal canal will have two sphincters. Two sphincters. One of them is a slingshot like muscle. It's known as puborectalis. Okay, attached to pubic bone and rectum and this is made of skeletal muscle this is voluntary control external anal sphincter external anal sphincter is under our control it's skeletal muscle okay and then it has a smooth muscle hypertrophy in this area just like we had pyloric sphincter this is internal anal sphincter the green one and this is under autonomic control so this is s two three four nerves that controls this this sphincter whereas the one in red pudendal nerve controls it who dendal nerve yeah so now <clears throat> you, what I'm trying to tell you is I'm giving you more information than you need for now but know this there are two sphincters two anal sphincters external and internal internal is under autonomic control not in your control involuntary whereas external the outermost sphincter is under your control it's under voluntary control you decide what to do with it okay so for example when we go to defecate we can actually relax the external inner sphincter the internal inner sphincter only responds to what distension if there's a lot of stool accumulating accumulating and then it will it will, it will force you to go will open by itself all right <clears throat> so in erectile fistula now that means in erectile fistula let me erase these these ones so I have some room it means fistula means communication fistula means communication if this is in a canal so the valve let's say is closed the valve is closed and then you have on top of the voluntary valve somewhere here 
in red that also keeps this area closed so that means if this is the patient they're unlikely to leak stool because there's two valves that are closed stool will not leak true but what if you have fistula fistula means communication tubular communication fistula in this case would mean that the fistula has to be outside of there's a communication between the rectum R and anal canal A okay so in this case the stool will what will happen to stool stool can leak okay it doesn't mean it keeps dripping like water but the patient might tell you you know what I have stains on my underwear I have stains and the stains is not blood okay it's most likely stool okay so that's common and please remember that this is very common and you'll be tested on that I guarantee you, you'll be tested on it let's see there you go that's the proof we're gonna be tested whenever somebody sneezes that things become true <laughs> so always wish good when you're sneezing <laughs> And if you wish bad for somebody, it comes back to you. It haunts you, so don't wish bad for anybody. <laughs> Alright, next thing. Now, the fistula, you know what? Intestine has bacteria, right? So what happens if the bacteria gets trapped in this fistula? Infection. So that will lead to perianal abscess. Perianal abscess. Perianal abscess, which you should write next. I don't have room because it's much lower so right next to anal fistula and you can have perianal abscess or perirectal abscess and those are painful each time the patient goes defecation they will hurt a lot abscesses are painful abscess is like a bag full of bacteria it will hurt and the person will have fever it will be so tender to touch that means even the stool compressing it will hurt imagine you push your finger on it and you will have to do some rectal examination of course okay volvulus let's go next to volvulus volvulus in simple terms means twisting 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 okay for example when I take this wire it twists look this is volvulus this is volvulus now what happened to this area the twisted area it's compressed what happens to blood supply abstracted blocked that means the <clears throat> the volvulus can go through necro necrotic event it can go through necrosis or ischemia so if I were to show a volvulus let's see what happened why can't I go there you go good job thank you very much <clears throat> so here you go intestine and then here is volvulus this area this area this twisting here this is the volvulus this area and the twisting and that that's very painful very painful extremely painful and the patients at risk of losing segment of their bowel so it should be corrected immediately even if you have to do surgery because let's say you, you say you know what I don't want surgery and you continue with volvulus what are you gonna do next surgery anyways to remove it because this dead tissue can spread it can get infected and stool can leak it can rupture so regardless even if you don't do anything about it eventually you have to do surgery and it's worse than so you would have to do even if you have to fix it even if a patient comes with volvulus and you cannot <clears throat> untwist it superficially you know with some maneuvers you have to do surgery laparoscopically you can do it you don't have to do open surgery so that's volvulus again avascular necrosis is the end result of volvulus avascular necrosis that means no blood supply to that region blood supply is cut off obviously when there's no blood supply this area will die okay so that's volvulus avascular necrosis okay bowel obstruction yeah okay so the patient will be complaining severe pain and not necessarily constipation if they do have some stool that's uh, beyond the volvulus there'll be some blood in there as well now volvulus what area of the intestines are more likely to, to have volvulus 
those areas of the intestine and colon that have no mesentery attached they're not attached to the wall of your abdominal wall those areas that are loose if this is attached it's unlikely to twist so what are those areas third and fourth part of duodenum all the retroperitoneal structure because they don't have attachment to peritoneum okay for example small intestines more likely to go to vulva especially the ileum area terminal ileum area okay and then of course sigmoid colon rectum in those areas transverse colon unlikely ascending colon unlikely descending colon unlikely it's ileum and sigmoid colon and duodenum fourth third part of duodenum that are loose so when a patient when a patient twists themselves they wrestles or whatever sometimes or they eat food a lot or something in a sudden movement and there's now another thing that can contribute to vulvalis remember have you guys ever seen maybe you should watch natural geography have you guys ever seen a snake swallow a rat yeah. or a bird or whatever how does it swallow it it keeps going you remember there's a ball there's a bulge that moves along the length of the snake that's peristalsis that is peristalsis so now what if there is <clears throat> In the snake you know and let's say halfway through the abdomen of snake there's a tumor as this wave is moving what will the tumor do obstruct it and now the wave is now moving and the snake can twist on itself think about it it twists on itself to do what to push to push this 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 bird whatever they, they ate same thing if there's some sort of adhesion now adhesion contributes to vulvalis that means this, the intestine is not loose enough to like contract if there's a tumor multiple things but overall vulvulus are very common in young children and elderly people that's the common age uh jimana Yeah, in, in elderly because the intestine is, you know, when we eat for two, 60, 50 years, the intestinal wall gets weaker and so forth and it gets loose. Because where do we, we store most of the food? Rectum, sigma colon. So with age, that area is more under trauma, more under pressure. In young people, they must have congenital defects, so it's most likely the small intestine. Yeah. Okay? Very good. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, <clears throat> can it cause now? Can it can it cause intussusception, which yeah, is invagination? So, meaning that you know, if peristalsis is moving like this, right? Yeah, but they can't see that. So, where is it? Yeah, right here. You can check it out. So remember, intestine is a tube. Intestine is a tube. Now, if I were to draw this for you, we'll see. Let's see. Let me do this. Interception, not really common, but it could be only in terminal idiom. All of you guys know what large intestine look like, right? It has these segments known as hostra. And then here should have the appendix. Terminal ilium is thinner compared to look cecum. Look at cecum. Look at the size of cecum. Let me color it green cecum is much larger right and let me do terminal ilium red it's much narrower now <clears throat> as the terminal ilium comes and the peristalsis somehow stops that means it keeps pushing in this direction it will keep pushing in this direction right terminal ilium when it keeps pushing and essentially then the intestine can overlap it can overlap think about it it can overlap it can start swallowing the terminal ilium this the rest of it because it's pushing against it if it's a tube it's pushing it's pushing it's pushing it will go like this over starts one that's interception it could happen yeah it could happen so this will be almost like you can use the term telescoping you know one segment of the intestine will swallow the other segment of the intestine because of the obstruction to peristalsis um what kind of example can i give you you know get a balloon and inflate it and start squeezing and pushing it <clears throat> one part of the balloon will swallow the other part you can do it that way too okay so that's what it means 
it's just simply because there's nothing is moving the, the wave is not moving one air is paralyzed the other waves contracting okay <coughs> um, let's see what, how else can I do this intersusception intersusception although we'll talk about it in children but it's okay let me do it right now so here you go this is a tube and then the tube the wave is mov moving in this direction now here is an obstruction so this skin right here of this tube is going to push but nothing is moving so eventually this skin will become folded like this because it's not moving beyond it right the peristaltic wave is not moving so it's not moving so it'll start bulging like this and eventually this will keep happening getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and so forth and then that segment the proximal segment of intestine will swallow the distal segment of the same intestine because the, the wave cannot move any further so this is known as antisusception so what happens to the inner segment now the inner segment can be compressed so at the end of the day this will lead to the same thing as almost like volvulus okay <clears throat> it will go through a vascular necrosis yeah and you, you will see that the term should be used, the segment of intestine that is telescoped or swallowed will look like a sausage, it will be inflamed. You will not see the, the folds externally, you will not see the segments. It will be smooth, shiny, inflamed, thick segment of intestine, thick. That happens in Crohn's or? In Crohn's, yeah. Also if colitis is unlikely. So what is it in the Yeah, I'll tell you. This is inter. Perception. Yeah. This should be you too. Do they just cut that out then? Yeah, you can lose it. So what you can do now, when you give this patient barium, what the barium do? Will push forward. Yeah. Barium usually resolves it. If it doesn't resolve, you have to do surgery. Barium resolves it. Mm -hmm. It cannot untwist, but it can release the segment of uh, interception. Because it can stimulate, stretch the wall and cause stretching in peristalsis and the distance segment as well. It's like a wave. Think about it this way. You know, you have, you, you've gone to the beach, right? As the wave comes, you know, on water, waves keep moving. It never ends. But when it comes and it hits something that is static, what happens to the waves? It wraps around it. Same thing. Okay. Okay, so now, in the rectal fistula is common. Anal or perianal or perirectal abscess is common. Volvulus is common. Intestinal adhesion. So now look, intestine is twisted, right? It's very twisted, and it's folded because it's long tube. You cannot put in this abdomen unless you fold it. If you t have you ever had scratch on your fingers or the skin when you hold it, what happens to them? Yeah, they will adhere. They will attach. Whenever you have scratch, for example, if you have a scratch and the area is scratched and you, or when you're bleeding, when you hold your skin together for about 10 minutes, what happens to your skin? It fuses. That means <clears throat> damaged tissue produces factor to cause healing. And one of factor of healing is fusion. If you cut your skin, you know, you can do that. It's okay, you can do that. No. <laughs> you can cut your skin and then if it's bleed, just hold it for a few minutes if you have good factors adhesive factors it will fuse and when it fuses you can let it go it will heal properly and this is why any wound open wound should be repaired within 24 hours because after that it would not fuse it would be difficult that means you have to cut around the edges to cause adhesion so now inflammatory tissues damage tissue See, an ulcerative colitis, and I'll tell you later on, see if you can remember this. If this segment is inflamed, and this segment is inflamed, and they come in contact with each other, wouldn't they attach and fuse? That's adhesion. This is common in Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis is unlikely, and I'll tell you what. See if you can pick it up, but know that this is intestinal adhesion. Parts of the small intestine will stick to each other, they will glue to each other, they will fuse. Because inflammatory tissue is adhesive. You see I'm spending almost one hour on these two. 
because these two are big deal. <coughs> Mazen, I think you have guessed. I think so. Check. Okay, now we have to compare these two. They're both inflammation. Both of them are what? Inflammatory diseases. They're both known as chronic inflammatory diseases or chronic bowel inflammatory disease or inflammatory bowel disease. Doesn't matter. They're both the same thing, but they're yet different. Okay. The cause of both of them is exactly the same. They're both idiopathic. We don't know the exact cause. They're both inflammatory disease. The cause of that inflammation, we don't know. We know who's at risk. We know it's Caucasian. We know it's East European. We know it's Central Asians. It's more prevalent in those areas. Okay. So now, <clears throat> the question is, what is the difference in terms of inflammation? Both are chronic inflammatory diseases, right? In chronic inflammatory disease, my lips are getting dry. In chronic, I hope this is. I think I can die. Yeah, no, 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 no. no that's okay. I got another one. Is there? There's a bottle, right? There's a there's a water there. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it's been sitting here for a month. So. <laughs> I guess you see, there's two things that the more they age, they get better. They say old is gold, and one is with carpet, and one is with tea. If you keep tea longer, it gets better and better. I don't talk about wine because you know. As a medical doctor, I, I tend to stay away from those things. So I'm not going to propagate that. Because there's no such thing as good wine. Well, Taste maybe, but in I terms know, of health. I'm not going to charge for that. Well, wine. I just know that. Yeah. What do you do with wine? No, because a lot of times patients will ask, people will ask me, you know, how about this commercial? They say, how about some cardiologist tell you, you know, once in a while, wine is good. But guess what? You, if you understand the term alcohol, it's a general term. In terms of chemicals there's a lot of alcohols maybe you can substitute something other alcohol but not ethanol ethanol is never good period methanol ethanol don't try it but when you talk about alcohol there's different versions of alcohol the ethanol version the methanol version don't try not even like for once a year I would not do it but you know even though there is research done that it does bring up HDL levels, for example, just a little amounts. Yeah. But you can still get those same aspects by lifestyle. Like oh yeah. Exercise and Muhammad's going on Thursday tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. He's going to Houston to a conference representing Avicenna, and he'll be talking about alcohol and its effects, its pleasant effects and its negative effects, right? So I hope he records it. No. If he does record it. We can we can show it. No, but I'll watch it for the whole. All right, that's okay. Now let me go back to this. So both of them are inflammatory diseases, correct? Now there's the question: How is the inflammation of Crohn's different than ulcerative colitis? Okay, and how is it similar? If they're both chronic inflammatory diseases, what kind of cells would you find? Now we have to do biopsy for this in this case. Let's say we do biopsy. We do biopsy. On biopsy of Crohn's versus ulcerative colitis, what kind of cells would you find? Inflammatory cells. Monocytes, macrophages, excellent. But that's not different. That's the same because monocytes and macrophages are cells of what? Chronic, Chronic inflammation. Macrophages. But which cell is actually true? Monocytes or macrophages? What would you pick? If you had a choice, now I would never give you two uh, as a choice A and B, but let's say you did, what would you pick? If you do biopsy of the intestine, would you pick macrophages or would you pick monocyte? Macrophages. Why? Because monocytes are before they get to a site. That's correct, that's correct. Monocytes intracellular, macrophages. No. Monocytes, macrophages. No. Monocytes, no. Monocytes in blood, macrophages in tissue. Acid. Yes, monocytes are baby macrophages, you can say that. That's correct, but I'm... Monocytes in the blood the There you go. Monocytes are in blood, that's what you said, right? Let me give you, sorry. Monocytes in blood, macrophages in tissue. 
if you're taking a tissue biopsy, you're not going to find blood cells there. They shouldn't be leaking. They shouldn't be leaking, right? These are inflammatory cells. So I'll just, it's okay to put both. But that's what you will find. Now further, if you do biopsy or endoscopy, you will find ulcerative colitis is mucosal inflammation. Mucosal inflammation. Um, I should put it on that side, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so that was for both. Let's just compare the two now. Ulcerative colitis is what? Mucosal inflammation. Crohn's disease is not mucosal inflammation. What do you think? Some of you, this is a review for some of you. Transmural is the correct term. Transmural. Yeah. Now, see, I was going to ask you. Good job. Trans means, mural means wall. Wall. The term mural means wall. Cardiac mural wall. You know, you can use for heart, you can use for anything. Wall, the term wall, mural. Now, when you say trans, means across the entire thickness of that wall. So it's not just mucosa, it's not just serosa, it's not just muscularis. All three layers are involved. Now, if I were to do this, let me just show you. This is important to understand, so I'm going to spend time on it, okay? So let's see, green is serosa. Red is muscularis. Blue is mucosa. And I will use, let's say, inflammation. Inflammation. Where is that beautiful? How's your tea, Ahmed? It's amazing. I love it. Good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> it's internal jokes, okay? So it's okay. Inflammation. You can see now the mucous membrane is involved. You know what? I'm going to do like, like a true slide. I'll do that. Why don't I just do that? Like a true slide that you see on, uh, under microscope. A true slide is usually pinkish in color. Okay, so let's say this is a slide, you will see. Okay, <clears throat> now the smooth muscle layer, the smooth muscle layer is, you will see some spindle shaped cells like this, and it's the thickest layer, of course. The mucus layer should be light blue, very thin. Again, I'm growing. I'm drawing it larger, so it'd be thin. And then let's make this layer slightly darker. Okay. And make this one slightly. Uh, I didn't do a good job today. Good. So when you look at these slides, true biopsies, you should see that. <clears throat> I'll just use light blue. Okay. So that's the mucus. Mucosa layer. Now infiltration. When we see infiltration, right? You will see dark. You will see dark white blood cells. Look in those slides again. I'll ask on Friday. Dark white blood cells. That means they're inf If you only see infiltration in the mucous membrane, what are you going to think? Uh, ulcerative colitis. colitis. If you see infiltration in all layers, Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. So in Crohn, the entire thickness of that wall is involved. And you know the inflammatory tissue is weak. If the entire thickness of that wall is damaged and weak, wouldn't it likely rupture? So that will lead to what? Fistulas. You see why fistula is more common in Crohn's? Okay. Now, if cirrhosis is inflamed, that means two cirrhosis can come in contact and adhes, infuse. Now you know why adhesions are common. Right? Okay. So that's... What is very important about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, you should know that this transmural versus mucosal inflammation explains a lot of complication of who? Crohn's disease. A lot of them. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next thing. What if you do endoscopy? I, mean, I can still continue with biopsy. Let me just finish with biopsy. So on biopsy for ulcerative colitis, well, you will see what? Mucosal inflammation. Okay. Mucosal inflammation now I might not use the term inflammation I might use infiltration when I use the term infiltration of white blood cell isn't that the same as inflammation yeah because the basis of inflammation is what 
infiltration or leakage of white blood cells from blood vessels into tissue otherwise you won't have inflammation okay so mucosal inflammation in here is transmural okay <clears throat> now the amount of monocytes and macrophages that's restricted to mucosal membrane ulcerative colitis if it's the entire wall that's so, one more thing um <clears throat> I was going to say something about inflammation, but let me go. All right. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Now, when you have monocytes and macrophages, they form, they sort of organize into these round spherical masses. What do you call those? Granulomas. Excellent. Granulomas. Granulomas, which is much more common. In both of them, you can have granulomas, but specifically in who? In Crohn's and these granulomas are not soft granuloma they don't look like cheese they don't feel like cheese they're hard so therefore non cassiating granuloma non cassiating granuloma okay so the granulomas would be non cassiating granuloma and it makes sense too in this case if you have these macrophages coming and they're the one causing inflammation guess what happens the epithelial especially smooth muscle cells the smooth muscle cell in this area will sort of form a barrier will trap them from spreading and causing inflammation further so it's restricting inflammation okay so number one you will have non-casing granuloma at the end of the day also in Crohn's disease it's non-continuous inflammation well oh, that's another good term see I, I'm remembering that well that was supposed to be erased so well okay so inflammation in Crohn disease is regional it's non-continuous meaning look if I take this length if this is the length of the small intestine you have inflammation normal inflammation normal inflammation along the length of intestine you will have inflammatory region or segment and then normal segment inflammatory normal inflammatory normal so we call, we use the term regional entero, enteritis regional enteritis not the entire length of the intestine small intestines involved some areas are spared so you can use two terms regional enteritis what does enteritis mean to you inflammation of the small intestine right if it's regional it's not continuous it's not continuous maybe in jejunum you have 10 regions that are normal and 10 regions that are inflamed so alternating right but you can also use skipped lesions the term skipped lesions so in Crohn's you will have skipped lesions skipped inflammation inflammation normal inflammation normal no that's different I'll come to that okay so remember that so far I, I use a lot of terms skipped lesion regional enteritis okay non-continuous inflammation it's transmural but it's not continuous what I mean by that what do I mean by that so if this is the intestine if this is the intestine let's say and this intestine has three layers serosa muscularis and mucosa okay so inflammation usually should be pink the entire thickness of this wall is inflamed you see that okay but when you talk about inflam inflammation it's not continuous this is continuous inflammation it's not so you will have inflammation here and then here and then here and then here but between them you have normal regions normal segments this is skipped lesions this is non-continuous inflammation okay and this is regional enteritis same thing if you compare that to ulcerative colitis the entire segment is involved it's continuous inflammation in ulcerative colitis it's continuous inflammation although it might not involve the entire colon if it's rectum that segment that is inflamed all of it is continuous it does not mean the entire colon have to be involved if 20 percent of colon is inflamed it doesn't mean 10 percent in the bottom 10 percent on top it means 20 percent continuous so that that segment is continuously inflamed whereas in, in Crohn, it's regional it skipped lesions okay so continuous versus non-continuous granuloma versus minimum granulomas now there's something opposite of granuloma and in, in ulcerative colitis you will see abscesses tiny abscesses huh? no 
I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. So <clears throat> you will see this tiny little abscess in the mucosal. Mucosal abscesses are more common in who? In ulcerative colitis. Okay. You can call them crypt abscesses in small, these tiny areas. Okay. So micro abscesses, and you should use the term micro abscesses, meaning you you might not be able to see with naked eye. Okay. Endoscopy you have to magnify, though you have to use biopsy tissue. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, in terms of ulcers, so let's go back to ulcers. In Crohn's, the ulcers are linear, snake-like serpent like linear linear vertical ulcers in ulcer of colitis it's patchy it's like a whole patch mm -hmm. you can see them on endoscopy now you know why these diseases are so <laughs> there's so much about it right whenever something is studied so much why do we study some diseases more than others they're more common more people are affected by them so and people put a lot of money into it for research and so forth, right? Okay. <clears throat> so it's guaranteed. You will see them for sure. You will see these two. Now, when you when you also go in the small intestine, the inflammation <clears throat> because of the inflammation, the villa and microvilla are destroyed. So in Crohn's, you can have <coughs> villus atrophy, villus atrophy. The brush borders are gone. And you will have the smooth surfaces on the inner side of small intestine. Smooth. Smooth bumps. Here, 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 here. And they will be called cobblestone. You know, like those smooth stones? When you, those of you who keep, keep fish tanks and whatever, if there's those tiny little stones, smooth ones. So that's what it looks like. That's why the term cobblestone is used. Okay. That's that picture. Yeah. That's that picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. or the lesions are known as cobblestone so it's this it's simply inflammatory disease of small intestine okay at the end of the day when it comes to symptoms if you are given a question a 50 year old Caucasian male or East European or Russian or Central Asian Asian is all those countries that ends with stands except Southeast Asia which is usually like Azerbaijan Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, these areas. Yeah. You know Borat? You guys watch the movie Borat? Yeah. Okay, so that belt of stunts. They're known as Central Asian countries. Very common in those areas. So Crohn's disease. Actually, my cousin has it. Ulcerative colitis. And I just call, got a call or text a few a week ago about her. So it's very common in those regions. Okay. Now, ulcerative colitis and, and, and Crohn's. If you are asked a question, a 50-year-old central asian or caucasian male or female okay simply comes to because of bloody diarrhea but this bloody diarrhea is not sudden onset it's not today it's chronic or a period of six months three months you will only be thinking one thing ulcerative colitis okay but if it says water diarrhea then we have a lot of issues they can be multiple things okay and we'll come to water diarrhea so i'm going to erase crohn's ulcerative colitis okay i'll remove this Please remember that is it puts you at huge risk of colorectal cancer, much more than all, uh, Crohn's disease. Okay, now let's come to this. We should be able to compare these guys. They're all similar. All of them will give you what? Watery diarrhea. All of them will give you watery diarrhea. But it's chronic watery diarrhea. Does it now? Does it mean you cannot have bloody diarrhea? No. Although it's more common with Crohn's compared to other three, to tropical and celiac and Whipple's disease. But they're unlikely, unlike ulcerative colitis, which is by far more common to have water, I mean, bloody diarrhea. Good? These are all chronic diarrheas. So you should know the difference between chronic and acute. Okay? You know what? Is it okay if I compare them? Acute diarrhea. It is. So I, I thought it was a good time right now. Just to compare. Just to compare. The cause of acute diarrhea is always what? Food poisoning. The term food poisoning. Meaning you took something toxic, a bacteria or a virus. Fungal unlikely. Maybe sometimes worms. 
but if you want to do that that means i will wait i'll just tell you the symptoms of it but the rest you have to next terms in bacteriology now e coli is a common cause okay let's go over bacteria because there's too many bacteria salmonella can cause it shigella another bacteria can you give me some names of bacteria what do you think enterococcus uh, i'll stay away from it no clostridium difficile okay very good anything else pseudomonas pseudomona su mona lisa no and a pseudo <laughs> okay anything else Klebsiella, yes but i have something more important which usually you get it from those of you who remember fried rice what bacteria you get it from reheated fried rice now you, you're gonna i'm gonna stop eating chinese food <laughs> Bacillus, Bacillus, Bacillus who? Bacillus has four members. It gives you cereal like diarrhea. Bacillus serious, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> one more. Vibrio. Vibrio family. There's two important ones. One is cholera, and the other one is para. Hemolyticus, very good. Anyways, the list keeps going. So as I said, we have to wait till microbiology. <laughs> I want to include here Staph aureus. Staph aureus. What else? Botulism. Botulism. Uh, we can include that, but yeah, sure. Bacillus botulinum. Clostridium botulinum. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, there should be one more. Clostridium perfernogens. Yeah. Let's let's include them. Perfernogens. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, which is flesh-eating bacteria. You guys probably heard of it. Was it year ago, two year ago in, in Georgia? some beautiful girls they died because of this infection do you remember that it was on cnn all over the news and they lost their limbs they wouldn't have the calf muscle for example because the bacteria ate it they're known as flesh eating bacteria okay. yeah. yeah there's multiple there's multiple yeah bacteria are not so like they're like many of them can do things <laughs> okay <clears throat> now we should have viruses can you give me the name of some viruses? Uh, rotavirus. Rotavirus.